بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear Vice Chancellor, many thanks uh, to you and your university, your, your Vice Chancellors, and all the members of your university, especially Department of uh, Arabic uh, Teaching, that this uh, conference is, is uh, taking place here uh, in Kerala University the most loved part of India. This is my second time I am being in Kerala. First we have been about five years ago in uh, Khozikot. And it's also part of Kerala. Yeah. Uh, Kalikut. Hmm? University Kalikut. And I understand uh, the register who organized this uh, conference now is uh, uh, appointed as vice chancellor in uh, University of Calicut. This is a good news that he has been given a, a, a promotion. Very good. And I also would like to extend our thanks and gratitude to Dr. Tajutin, uh, who has taken Lover's work with his team uh, to make uh, this conference a successful one. Also, uh, the names uh, that I would like to mention here, uh, Dr. Ashraf and Dr. Nushat, uh, that they have uh, devoted their time, sparing from their family, into making this conference a successful one. Also, I would like to express my deep thanks to those who, who came, scholars who came from Saudi Arabia, from Jordan, from Algeria, from uh, Bangladesh, of course, yes, and and uh, I hope that I didn't miss any international delegates who are here, and also scholars are coming from different parts of India. We have now scholars coming from Ali, uh, from Aligarh uh, University and other universities. Uh, Please forgive me if I don't mention your, your names. We feel ourselves at home. India is like part of our country that we are here. We don't feel ourselves as guests. It is a second home for us. And I would like to thank and mention the names of the universities that in the past we had joined international conferences and symposiums. We had one in uh, Delhi with uh, Jainu Jawaharlal Nahru University, and the second one was with Jamia Millia Islamia, and the third one was with uh, Aligarh Muslim University, the other one was with uh, Kashmir Islamic University of Science and uh, Technology in, in Kashmir, and this is now we are having in, uh, last year actually we had in Kolkata University in West Bengal. And this is the fifth one we are having with uh, University of Kerala. Now the theme of the conference is very rightly chosen, uh, which is uh, education and ethics in the teachings of Sayyid Nursi. I don't know how far you have an idea about the life and thought of Sayyid Nursi, but with the presentation I think at least you get very rough idea who was Sayyid Nursi and what sort of work he had. In short, Said Nursi was born in 1876 in eastern part of Turkey and around 85 years of life long struggle for a better education and better interpretation 
of Quran. He had no family, he had no worldly things, and even after his death, his grave also was destroyed. So he doesn't have anything worldly. What he had, 85 years, he devoted for the interpretation and correct practicing of Quran. Now, during his time, I leave this, there are some books in Arabic and in English giving short, short introduction to his life. You may get there, and those who cannot get books, you can uh, easily uh, get information uh, via internet about his life and his thought. Today I will just, you know, concentrate my, my 15 minutes of talk about his educational project and his thought about, his ideas about how to establish a correct uh, elements, in, ingredients of uh, ethics, moral values. Nursi's time in Ottoman, there were three types of educational system. One was with, with madrasa, teaching on only religious sciences. The other one was mektep, teaching physical sciences. And the third one was oral education, taught by tariqa, orders. Nursi wanted to combine them. For Nursi, there wasn't, you know, a difference between religious and physical sciences. He said that religious sciences are coming from uh, uh, attributes of kalam, Allah speaks, and physical sciences are coming from the creation aspect of the attributes of uh, God, Allah. These are uh, the, you know, reflected on the universe. So he said that religious and physical sciences, when they are combined, a true educational institution will emerge, and he called that educational institution Madrasa to Zahra. It has a very unique uh, meaning in Said Nursi's writing, which means physical and religious sciences are united and thought side by side in an integrated manner. For Nursi, if education is ill-conditioned, is not thought properly, he says, then we will have problems of ignorance and the byproducts of ignorance, poverty and conflict. In order to get rid of poverty and conflict, we have to have uh, religious sciences and physical sciences thought in an integrated manner. So how Nursi's educational system is integrated with, uh, with uh, ethics and moral values. In one of his undying conference or uh, sermon he gave in 1911 at Umayyad Mosque in Damascus. He calls it Kutba uh, Shamiya in Lugha Arabi, in, in English, Damascus Sermon. Please find it and read it via internet. There he begins his sermon with the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Jitu Utemime Mekarimal Akhlaq. So he said that my being sent as prophet to complete the moral values and ethical values. So it means that Nursi almost can see religion as the complete set of ethics and moral values. So we have to 
understand correctly what Nursi means about uh, ethics and moral values here. Nursi is teaching all about, if someone says that Nursi is teaching is all about ethics and completing moral values of the society, in his idea is kind of equivalent of religion, it is not exaggeration. It is, it is true. His, his ethical understanding or moral values understanding of Nursi is based on what we call Surat al-Mustaqim. In Surat al-Fatiha, as you know, when we are praying, we say, Ihtina Surat al-Mustaqim, O Allah, keep me on the right path. So what right path means? What Surat al-Mustaqim means? Uh, in, Rus in Nursi's uh, teaching, he says that Allah has hosted spirit in body. So we have a body, physical one, and spirit. Spirit is hosted in the body. In order the body to survive from the condition of the world, Allah has given certain characters to our spirit and body to live together. He says one of them is intelligence intellect or in Arabic aql with intellect and aql we divide what is good and what is bad okay and then second one a power station that given to us to survive to 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 save us from dangerous things in Arabic it is called kuwait qadabiyya to defend ourselves, kind of, you know, power that we, we, we defend ourselves from harmful things. And the third one is uh, so welcome. Ah, Dr. Binasi, welcome. You are a bit late. Thank you for your presence. Now let me say, repeat, okay? For the sake of Dr. Nasir. Yeah. Nursi, uh, Nursi's concept of uh, ethics, akhlaq, based on three powers. One is mind, intellect, to differentiate bad from good, okay? So we divide, this is good, this is bad. To take the good and to, to repulse, bad, okay? And the second one, the power to receive good is called Huwe Shahaviyya, means to get good things, the power of getting good things. Like for example, eating, you know, having good life, etc., etc. Uh, defending our life, etc. And the third one is to, to push away bad things. It's called Kuwait Gadabi. Nursi says that, however, by Allah, by God, there are limitations about these three powers, but in reality, in physical, due to examination of, we are in the examination in this world, there is no limitation for these three powers. Means mind, having good things and repulsing bad things. So in practice, there are extremism, you know, in both sides. What is, what he calls, let me say with his own words, he says that these three, these three powers, mind, intellect, having good things and pushing bad things away has three categories. Extremism, deficiency or degree of negligence 
and degree degree of superabundance having you know extra and also the middle way in arabic we have ifrat tafrit and wasat so these three powers then has nine uh, degrees so three of them are safe and six of them are uh, not safe for for uh, our spirit to live in our body or uh, our our behaviors our actions in the society are not safe today all humanity is suffering from these six extremist behaviors so allah has given you know uh, mind and sent prophets and sent revelations in order to bring these six extreme behaviors into correct what they call it wasat ways or middle ways and today all the society muslim non-muslim as a human all of us has these nine code of behaviors nine say principles of extremes or safe uh, behaviors in our life so nursi says that we have to correct ourselves by teachings of religions and by the teachings of all prophets of course final and the latest and the complete teaching of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his hadith his sunnah are based on revelation on quran and quran is teaching us how to be away from this extreme uh, code of codes of of life now it is our problem by reading Quran in a special case Sayyid Nursi's writings risale Nur to save ourselves from extreme behaviors of of ethics and moral values and to keep us on the safe middle way for Nursi the middle, middle way consists of uh, three uh, basic uh, concept. One of them is about the middle way of akhl. He says is hikmah. Hikmah means wisdom. This brain and mind and intellect is given to us to understand what is right and what is wrong in the light of Quran and prophetic traditions and the second one about Kuwait Shahaviyah or the, 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 the power station that we get you know good things he says is uh, if so with the light of Quran to understand that this is extreme and this is e extreme in uh, you know, two two sides, ifrat and tafrit, and the wasat is ifa. Ifa in Nursi's terminology is to have desire for halal and not to have desire for haram things. And the halal and haram is specified in religious terminology and prophetic terminologies. And the third one is about Kuwait uh, Qadabiya means about the power station that we eat, we, we, we repulse bad things, illicit things. And he says it is Shaja. Shaja means you have right to defend yourself but you don't have right of attacking others. 
Now, if you look at today, I'm not going to, you know, make detail, detailed discussion about this matter, because this my 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 duty is to give you a rough, you know, uh, borders a border line of the, the 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 theme of the conference. If you look at today in the world, and people are suffering from those who do not have correct way of defending themselves. Today people are, the, the problem are not create, being created by the, the, the people who are defending themselves. The problem are coming those who have gone you know astray to attacking others, uh, endangering others' life and harming others. If you look at you know Middle Eastern countries and worldwide it is very easy to see. So we say that now, we have Nursi's uh, methodology of describing correct ethics and moral values based on hikmah, wisdom, chastity, effect, and uh, shaja means not harming others but defending themselves. Now, in short, I would like to invite you if you want to learn the detailed teaching of Said Ursi regarding akhlaq and ethics and moral values, we have to go through his 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 Risalainur because oh, Risalainur Nursi's interpretation on Quran is all about how to make well-behaved, well-educated, uh, well-trained human that is neither harming himself nor harming others. Uh, I think I got uh, a note that uh, my time is ended. And I was also at the end of my talk. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And Pro Vice Chancellor, thank you very much for your presence. And your team that organized this, this conference here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you.